great run. Tommy McNamara does not need a second invitation. Fabulous finish. He's got the composure. It's an easy one, yes. But when you've got defenders around you, you still got to finish. And he does exactly that. They switch off New York and they're punished yet again. It's terrible defending. Juan Jones working on Anton Tetterholm. Puts it up and over Tristison. And all the full. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Revolution Pregame Live. He's Jeff Lemieux. I'm Elizabeth Bahoda. The New England Revolution are hosting longtime rivals, the New York Red Bulls, tonight at 6 o'clock. And we have everything that you need to know leading up to kickoff, including analysis on your starting lineups and all of your key storylines. It's been a while since we've had a pregame show, but you might notice we're in a different location. We've been bouncing around between spots at Gillette Stadium. Jeff, we might settle down eventually, but it's nice to keep people on their toes. Yeah, well, what's the most valuable commodity in Major League Soccer. It's versatility, right? Yeah. So we have proven with the pregame show this year, this is our fourth, third, fifth show, third different spot, and totally different spot than we did last year. We're just proving our versatility, which makes us very valuable to the club. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're just keeping everybody on their toes as we kind of bounce around. You never know, we might be in a new location next week. Let's start, though, by welcoming fans back to Gillette Stadium. This is the first time in 474 days that the Revs are able to have full capacity back in Foxborough. If we had to put a number on it, it'd be about, I don't know, a year, three months, and 17 days. So it has been a long time coming. Head coach Bruce Arena told us that it finally feels like the team and the, the club are getting back to a stronger sense of normalcy. How exciting is it to welcome back fans to Gillette Stadium in full? Yeah, it's exciting, and I think it's because of that normalcy that you mentioned. As we've seen stadiums around the United States, stadiums on, around the world get back to welcoming back uh, full capacity crowds and lifting those restrictions, uh, it just every single time you see those crowds it's just another sense of normalcy so what I'm really looking forward to as we get deeper into the summer is seeing the supporters coming back seeing the riders and the rebellion the rest of the supporters together in the fort shoulder to shoulder singing and chanting for the first time in a really long time it's been too long and I cannot wait to, to see and hear them back in the stadium it's a great time to welcome fans back. Why, you might ask? Let's set the scene. The Revs are on a four-game winning streak. They're also number one in the East, and they are a perfect 4-0-0 at home, looking to make it five tonight. This would be the first time in club history that the Revs have won five straight to start the season. What's most impressive about this group while well, they're in such hot form? Well, for me, what's been most impressive early in the season is that the Revs have shown they can win games in a variety of ways. They have not been a one-trick pony through the early portion of the season. We know that they can grind games out. Mm -hmm. Three of their six wins have been by one nil score line. So we know that they can be solid defensively and find that one goal to get them three points. We've seen games in which they've conceded first and they've had the mentality to battle back and pick up three points. We saw that a month ago when the Revs hosted the Red Bulls here at Gillette Stadium. And we've seen if they get into games where it's just a pure shootout like they did this past weekend against New York City FC, they can just flat out outscore teams. So they've shown that they can win in a variety of ways and that's going to be really important throughout the course 
course of a 34 game season. You mentioned that game at New York City FC. Let's recap that a little bit. The scoreline ended 3-2 with the Revs winning and trading chances throughout against New York City FC. However, a goal scoring trio of Gustavo Bo, John Bell and Tommy McInerney lifted the Revs to victory. Coach Arena mentioned post game that this wasn't how he expected the game to go with us being such a high scoring match. However, he was proud of the strong effort the group put in to grind out the result. Where can the group improve considering it was such a it was such a drawn out game? Yeah, I think the Revs came out of that game at New York City FC happy with the three points, but certainly with some areas where they said we need to be a little bit better there mm -hmm. moving forward as we get deeper into the season. Certainly defensively, you know, the Revs needed to tighten things up there a little bit. They conceded a lot of high quality looks to New York City FC. They relied on Matt Turner a little bit to save their bacon a few times, which is great to have Matt Turner back there to do that. Uh, you don't want to do that too, too often though. So looking to tighten things up back there a little bit. And we should note as well, the Revs did concede from another set piece at Red Bull Arena. So until the Revs uh, kind of consistently tighten things up on defensive set pieces, that's going to continue to be an area of focus for as well. So the Revs find themselves in a good spot. They're winning games, they're playing well, they're scoring goals, but they know that there are more levels to reach. And that's what's really exciting as you get deeper into the season. Jeff, you touched on it a little bit, but one player who has been so consistent for the Revs is goalkeeper Matt Turner. In the Revs 3-2 win over New York City FC, Turner had a massive penalty save. He registered a season high of seven saves, and he's been a consistent presence both physically and vocally for the Revs defensively. Turner also earned the prestigious honor of MLS Player of the Week, becoming the first ever Revolution goalkeeper to receive this award. How has Turner elevated his games in recent play? Well, I think the reason you continue to see a rise in form from Matt Turner, and you've continued to see a rise of form mm -hmm. really for a couple of years now is this mentality that he has to never be satisfied with what he has accomplished. You look at his background, a player who didn't start playing competitive soccer until high school, he could have been satisfied that he became a starter at Fairfield and was a starting college goalkeeper. He could have been satisfied that he made an MLS roster. He could have been satisfied that he became a starter in MLS. He could have been satisfied that he made an appearance with the U.S. national team and saved a penalty at the national team level. But none of those accomplishments, while he's proud of those accomplishments, None of them have satisfied him. He is always looking towards the next accomplishment, and he's always looking to get better every day on the training ground. He actually said this week, yeah, it's great that I played a game for the U.S. national team, but you know, we won that game 7-0. What I want to do is play against top-level competition and contribute to games that matter for the U.S. national team. So he's already looking towards that next accomplishment. That's how he approaches every day on the training ground, and that's why you just continue to see him get better and better. Turner will look to continue to improve heading into tonight's game. The Revs are actually unbeaten when they've scored first in games. They've gone 5-0-1 oh, in competitions this year when they have gotten one on the board first. Turner told us this week that there's been a really strong emphasis on teams strong, starting strong when the Revs have been on the pitch. What's been the difference maker when the Revs have been able to put one away? Yeah, when you can get on the board first in the game of soccer, it allows you to dictate the tempo a little bit. If you're chasing a game, you have to change the way that you want to play a little bit. It's not a good position to be in. When you are the team that's on top, you can dictate things a little bit more. And that's what the Revs have been able to do quite a bit this season. And kind of what's fascinating about this is while the Revs have gotten on the board first quite a bit, they haven't necessarily started games well all that often. You look at that New York City FC game this past weekend, the Revs got on the board first in that game, but they actually relied on Matt Turner a lot at the beginning of that game because they felt like they started the game a little slow. So while they have been getting on the board first pretty consistently. Uh, they know that they need to start stronger, particularly against this Red Bulls team here tonight at Gillette Stadium. Let's get right to it. Who are we going to see in the starting lineup for the Revolution for tonight's match? We are going to see three changes to the starting 11, which I feel like has become a pretty consistent theme. It feels like every time we go through a starting 11, we see three changes. Along the back line, we see a change in central defense, which we've become pretty used to. We'll see Henry Kessler come back into the starting lineup to partner Andrew Farrell. Uh, in midfield, we'll see changes on both wings. Tejan Buchanan comes back into the starting 11. He will play on the right wing, which pushes Tommy McNamara from that right wing back into central midfield to partner Matt Polster. And then on the left wing, we'll
We'll see Teal Bunbury come back into the starting lineup as Arnold Tristison gets his first rest since he arrived in New England. You mentioned three changes tonight. There were three changes last week when the Revs played at New York City FC, and two of those changes produced with Gustavo Bo and John Bell getting on the board in that game. You had an opportunity to ask Arena about that. What did he say about the players that have rotated in? Yeah, I mean, first of all, Bruce made a joke as Bruce Arena is uh, – is, Typical. It's, it typically does. Uh, it was pointed out to him that he had inserted Gustavo Bo and John Bell into that starting 11, and they both scored, and he said, well, I... I guess that's just unbelievable coaching uh, in pretty typical uh, Bruce, Bruce Arena sarcastic fashion. But then he went on to say, look, we're going to continue to see a lot of faces play a lot of minutes throughout the course of the summer. It's going to be an unusually busy summer. There's going to be a lot of midweek games. A lot of fresh faces are going to see a lot of minutes. You're going to see guys coming in and out of the lineup. And in order to be near the top of the standings at the end of the year, you're going to need contributions from those guys when they come into the lineup. They got it Saturday night against New York City FC. They'll hope to get another contribution from guys who come back in the lineup tonight. Speaking of one of those goal scorers, Gustavo Bo returned from injury last week against New York City FC, and he did so in style. Bo had an incredible one-touch rocket from outside the 18-yard box in which he put the Revs on the board first against New York City FC. And Bo is actually on the Bo is unbeaten as far as leading the Revs to victory, going 12-0-4 seven in all competitions in which he has scored. How likely is it that we're seeing the full strength bow that first came to the Revs and had an 11 game unbeaten run? Yeah, I think the international break came at a really good time for mm -hmm. Gustavo Bo. We saw him deal with a couple injuries through the first eight games of the season, so that international break was a good opportunity for him to get himself healthy. And when he is healthy, this is the type of contribution that you get. He is capable of these types of moments of magic. You referenced when he came in in July 2019 and the Revs went on that winning streak. He scored an unbelievable goal against the Vancouver Whitecaps in his first appearance. A volley from the top of the box looked a lot like the goal he scored yes. uh, against New York City FC. So this is what he is capable of, and he has shown as well as we see this goal that he scored against uh, Vancouver. So you can see exactly, not exactly how similar it was, but volley from the top of the box, moment of magic. That's what Gustavo Bo gives you. Uh, but he's also been really, really good against uh, this New York Red Bulls team as well. He's appeared three times against uh, the Red Bulls since arriving in New England. He's got three goals and one assist in those three games. He has scored in all three games. Uh, so La Pantera has feasted on the Red Bulls in the past. Hopefully he is hungry again tonight. We'll look forward to seeing uh, Gustavo Bo's appetite tonight against the New York Red Bulls. Playmaker Carlos Heel has been on fire in recent weeks. Heel leads the league with seven assists. To put that in perspective, that's three more than the runner-up. Heel's also had four consecutive assists. What's allowed Heel to be so versatile with providing service? Well, for me, what makes Carlos Heel so special is the fact that he can change the game in a moment. That is all he needs is a moment or two to change a game because for 75 minutes on Saturday night, New York City FC did a pretty good job of limiting Carlos Heel's influence on that game. It was probably as quiet as we have seen Carlos Heel in a Revolution jersey for those first 75 minutes. But then he finds a couple yards of space and he's able to provide a pinpoint cross to John Bell for his goal to put the Revs in front at the time. Uh, fantastic ball as the ball got recycled uh, after a, a set piece. And then again, he comes up with a moment of magic playing a ball through to Tejan Buchanan, uh, springs Buchanan down the left wing to set up Tommy McNamara for the game winner. So really the only two moments in which Carlos Hill was really influential at New York City FC, but they end up being the two moments that win you the game. That's exactly what he does. Hill's able to make moments count the most when it comes down to it. Let's take a look further at the attack. Forward Teal Bunbury is in the starting lineup tonight. While Bunbury's had seven appearances this year, this is only his second start for the group. What kind of opportunity is this for Bunbury? Yeah, it's a huge opportunity because I look at Teal Bunbury. This is a guy who started 19 of the Reds 23 regular season games last year. He was the Revs' leading scorer mm -hmm. with eight goals. He was a big contributor last season. But as Carlos Hill has come back from injury this year, as Tejan Buchanan has emerged on the right wing, as Arnold Tristison has come into the team and taken up a lot of those minutes, Teal Bunbury's been a, something of a casualty in terms of minutes within this attack. So he's actually only played 10 minutes in the last three games. And Teal Bunbury is the type of guy who really wants to be on the field. And he is hungry to get back on the field. And these are the types of opportunities that in years past, when we've seen Teal get these opportunities, he has grasped hold of them. So 
So I know that he's going to be hungry for this opportunity tonight. I'm looking for Teal Bunbury uh, to, to really grasp hold of the chance. Keep your eye on Bunbury tonight. As you look to the other side of the field, Tejon Buchanan will be out on the right wing. What we don't talk about often with Buchanan is his ability to get fouled smart. Buchanan leads the league in this category with 13. How beneficial is it to have a player that can be so smart tactically in the final third in big moments? This is exactly the type of player that Tejon Buchanan is. He thrives in these situations where he isolates a defender and takes them on one-on-one. -on -one. Now, sometimes he's going to beat that man, be able to whip in a cross. Other times he's going to beat that defender into a foul, and he's going to win a free kick in the attacking third of the field. And when you have a player like Carlos Heel on your team, every time Tejan Buchanan wins a free kick in the attacking third of the field and Carlos Hill steps over that set piece, you have now given yourself a, a really quality scoring opportunity. So it has been a huge part of Tejan Buchanan's game. It's not just actually beating his man, it has been winning fouls in those positions. Midfielder Tommy McNamara will get another start tonight. McNamara played a big role in the Revs 3-2 victory over New York City FC with the game winner. It's McNamara's first goal since joining the Revolution last August in 2020. However, McNamara sets up a little bit differently tonight. Where will we see him in the lineup? Yeah, whereas we saw Tommy McNamara playing on the right wing at New York City FC, a little more out wide, a little higher up the field. He shifts inside tonight into central midfield alongside mm -hmm. Matt Polster. Uh, when we have seen this pairing together in the past, it has been Polster, who's been a bit more of that holding number six midfielder. McNamara has played a little bit more as the box to box number eight. So still provides him an opportunity to get into the attack. And he had actually shifted into that number eight role on Saturday night at New York City FC when he got forward and scored that game winning goal late. So it is a position that still affords him that opportunity to press forward. And I think this is probably Tommy McNamara's most comfortable position. Let's pivot and take a look at the back line. You will see Henry Kessler coming in for John Bell. Bell had an outstanding performance at New York City FC as he notched his first ever career MLS goal. Why the switch Kessler for Bell after that performance? Well, one, it's a busy week. You know, the Revs are playing their second game in the midst of a three game week. They played on Saturday night. They'll play tonight. They go back on the road this weekend to play at Dallas on Sunday night. So just the fact that it's a busy week, you were anticipating some rotation and we've seen a lot of rotation at center back and two it's pretty clear that Bruce Arena plans to just kind of platoon this three-man center back group in those two center back positions Andrew Farrell has been the stalwart thus far has played all of the minutes so far this season but they are definitely rotating Henry Kessler and John Bell alongside Andrew Farrell. Uh, and I think they're going to continue to do that throughout the course of the season. The more and more uh, we see uh, games come up thick and fast, I think we're going to continue to see Fer a lot of Farrell, a lot of Bell, and a lot of Kessler this summer. Speaking of rotation and teamwork, all three designated players, Gustavo Bo, Adam Buxa, and Carlos Heel, have worked together seamlessly, whether it's been on the bench or in the starting lineup. The three have played a role in 11 of the Revs' 12 goals on the season. How promising is it to have all three DPs producing at this rate now that they're finally able to be in the lineup together? Yeah, well, this is fascinating because I think we all envisioned these three guys clicking together as part of the starting 11. Mm -hmm. But that is not what we have seen in recent weeks. We haven't really seen the three of these guys starting together because Gustavo Bo and Adam Buxa have been kind of rotating at that number nine position. But they've either been starting or coming off the bench and contributing regardless of when they've been on the field. Gustavo Bo has scored in each of his last two appearances. Adam Buxa has scored in three of his last four appearances. Carlos Hill leads the league with seven assists. He has five assists in his last four games. All three of these guys are performing right now. They're not all doing it in the starting 11 at the same time, but you are getting big contributions from all three of these guys. And when you pay that type of money for DP attacking players, that's the type of contribution you expect to get. The three DPs are clicking and we look forward to hopefully seeing more of that tonight. Let's take a look at the opposition though, Jeff. I know that the lineups have just been released so you're going to have to check it on your phone. However, who are we going to have to see in the Red Bulls lineup tonight? I am literally pulling up the lineup right now because when we started the show, the lineups hadn't been out yet. So I'm looking at the Red Bulls lineup as we speak. The first thing to note, of course, is some of the, some of the pieces that are missing here tonight. Aaron Long, we mentioned a month ago uh, when the Reds played mm -hmm. against the Red Bulls. Aaron Long, stalwart center back for the Red Bulls, lost for the 
season to an Achilles injury. Uh, Christian Caceres Jr., who has three goals and seven appearances this year, he is on international duty with Venezuela at Copa America, so he's unavailable tonight. Daniel Royer out injured. He's been a Revs killer in the past. So some significant pieces missing for this Red Bulls team. But as you look down the lineup and look at some of these guys, names like Kyle Duncan and John Tolkien, Frankie Amaya, uh, there are some quality young pieces on this Red Bulls team. It is a team that is competing now in MLS, but is potentially built for the future. This is a team that if they can keep some of these guys in the Red Bull system for a while, they are going to be contributors for years to come. I think their starting 11 uh, in their last game was something like 22.7 years old. It was a very, very young team. Uh, so if if this team is some, a team that they can keep together, if they can keep a core together for a while, uh, they could be uh, a force for, for a while in the East. This young Red Bulls team has been doing pretty well when you take a look at the standings. They sit at fifth place in the East and they've gone 4-4-0 four, four, and oh through eight games. And their most recent performance was actually against Nashville SC in which they won and it was the only team that the Revs have fallen to so far this season. Who do the Revs need to watch tonight as this young Red Bulls team comes in? Well, they do not need to watch Caden Clark as I am noticing he is not on the match day squad tonight. So Caden Clark unavailable for tonight's game, uh, a player who has has been the Red Bulls most consistent attacking player with four goals and two assists. The guy I will point out is the guy you're seeing on the screen right now, Fabio. 24-year-old Brazilian forward, first season with the Red Bulls. He leads the team with four assists, and last weekend against Nashville, he scored his first goal. He's a commanding presence at six foot four, but also has quite a bit of skill with the ball at his feet. As you saw from that volley he scored last week against Nashville, it was a fantastic goal. Uh, so he is a player, I'm sure, at the point of that Red Bulls attack that the Reds are going to have to. I'm sure Andrew Farrell and Henry Kessler will have uh, their hands full with Fabio tonight. We showed some of the footage, but a big coincidence is that the last team that the Revs played at home at Gillette Stadium was in fact the New York Red Bulls. The Revs took down the Red Bulls coming from behind to secure a 3-1 win at Gillette Stadium. Goalkeeper Matt Turner told us this week that the Revs didn't start out strong enough in this game and they need to correct that tonight with the rematch. The Red Bulls are a big physical team. They're tall in stature and they're really dangerous on set pieces. What advantage does it give the Revs that they've played them in recent weeks? Yeah, I think part of the effect of that pre previous meeting is kind of mitigated by the fact that the Red Bulls played the second half with 10 men. Mm -hmm. So you can't pull as much from that second half just because tonight's game will play out a little bit differently with the Red Bulls back at full strength. Uh, but like you mentioned, the Reds do feel like they need to get off to a much better start against the Red Bulls. And two, I think in that game the Reds showed, you know that the three goals that they scored, the first goal is Gustavo Bo getting in behind that Red Bulls back line from near midfield. Uh, you see the ball that gets played through from Arno Tristes and sends Gustavo Bo through from well out. Uh, the third goal that they end up scoring in that game to seal that game is another ball that gets played through from deep that sends Gustavo Bo through from near midfield. Consistently, Gustavo Bo and this Revolution team have been able to get in behind the Red Bulls back line when they've played high. So I'm sure that is something that the Revs will be looking to exploit again tonight. The Revs have something to fight for tonight as well as they defend their home field. The Revs are a perfect 4-0-0 at home and they're looking to make it five tonight. How imperative is it for the group to take a full three points every time they play at Gillette Stadium? Yeah, we've talked about it a ton of times on the pregame show. If you want to be near the top of the Eastern Conference come the end of the season, if you want to be in the Supporter Shield mix, you have to pick up the majority of points that are on offer at home. The Reds have done a great job about that through the early part of the season. They're going to have to continue to do that throughout the course of the season if they want to be in the mix at the top of the East. And particularly as we look at what's coming, there are a lot of road games coming up, so they're not going to have a ton of opportunities at home through June and July. So when they do have these chances, they've got to take advantage of them. Luckily, as the Revs sit at number one in the Eastern Conference, they've had strong road form as well. New England picked up back-to-back -back road wins at FC Cincinnati before the international break and then after at New York City FC. This timing couldn't come at a better spot as well because the Revs will play four of their next five away from home. How beneficial will it be for the group to combine this road form with the home form? Yeah, I mean, they've shown with back-to-back -back road wins, this is a team that is very comfortable going away from home. The win this past weekend at New York City FC was the Revs 13th away from home under Bruce Arena since he arrived in June of 2019. That is the most in Major League Soccer. So the Revs have statistically been the best road team in MLS with Bruce Arena at the helm. Uh, they're going to need that type of character and mentality as they go on the road 
uh, for some of these games coming up. I mentioned they go to Dallas on Sunday night. That's always been a really difficult place to play. The following weekend, they'll go open up uh, Lower.com Field in Columbus. Always difficult to go in and play a team mm -hmm. in a brand new stadium. Uh, so some difficult road trips coming up, but ones that the Revs will feel like they have the steely mentality to get them through. There is a really interesting storyline between the Revs and the Red Bulls. Home field advantage has played such a large role in recent history. New England has won six of their last eight in Foxborough. Meanwhile, the Red Bulls, they've won 10 of their last 12 at Red Bull Arena. Why has home field advantage been so prominent in this series? I don't have an answer as to why it has been so prominent. It is, uh, it's bordering on the absurd how mm -hmm. heavy home field advantage <laughs> has mattered in this series. I will say the Revs seem like they're figuring it out at Red Bull Arena. They've beaten the Montreal Impact, now CF Montreal, at Red Bull Arena. They've beaten New York City FC at Red Bull Arena. So now the next step is just beating the Red Bulls at Red Bull Arena, but we'll get there. Um, but look, what we're talking about tonight is Gillette Stadium and the success the Revs have had against the Red Bulls here. It's unbelievable. Their record against the Metro Stars slash New York, New Jersey Metro Stars slash Red Bulls, all iterations of this team in Foxborough is 24 6 and eight. It's a winning percentage of 737 over 26 years. It's absolute insanity. Uh, so hopefully the Revs continue that here tonight because they have been absolutely stellar against this Red Bulls team in Foxborough. As the Revs look to continue this momentum tonight, it comes at a great point because as we mentioned, the stadium will be back to full capacity and also because it's Pride Night. This is a night that the Revs love to have, the fifth annual night for the club. You'll notice rainbow elements incorporated throughout the stadium, most prominently displayed at the Lighthouse and the Pride flag, as well as the Revs warm-up jerseys that they will walk onto the field with. Jeff, there's been a different flag that will be displayed at Gillette Stadium. Can you explain that? I just wanted to first say you'll also notice pride elements on the Revs pregame show <laughs> with my pride socks. I don't know if we can zoom in on those. We can catch them. Yeah, I got a close up on that. My, maybe maybe not. Maybe not. It's starting to cramp up a little bit. I'm not much of an athlete anymore, uh, <laughs> but pride elements here as well. But yes, I did have a chance uh, earlier. Well, late last week to speak with uh, Kirtland Masarski, who is the director of marketing and development at Bagley. And we chatted about the progress pride flag because you will see a different flag flying over Gillette Stadium tonight. So as you look at the new flag that is flying over the stadium, you'll notice there are some different shapes on the flag. There's kind of a chevron on one side of it and then some colors, some different colors added to the flag uh, in you know, white, blue, and pink representing trans transgender. And then they've got black and brown. So it is essentially the idea behind this progress flag is to become more inclusive so that it's not just representing uh, sexual identity it's also representing race and all of these kind of different intersectionality so the idea behind the progress pride flag is to simply become more inclusive uh, so that is the reason you'll see the progress flag flying over the stadium tonight so we're gr great that we've got pride night that we get to celebrate and then we should note as well we're also continuing our Juneteenth celebrations tonight mm -hmm. uh, as the Revs were on the road on the actual Juneteenth date so we will see uh, lift every voice and sing performed for the first time at Gillette Stadium tonight. Uh, Miranda Ray, a local R&B singer-songwriter, will be performing both the Star Spangled Banner and Lift Every Voice and Sing, commonly referred to as the Black National Anthem. So join us tonight to celebrate uh, Pride Night, Juneteenth, and hopefully by the end of the night, we'll be celebrating three points in front of the home fans as well. Absolutely. Jeff, before we go, I want to comment on your athletic abilities because I know you put out a tweet earlier today about two Olympians, a Boston Marathon finisher, and someone who gets winded walking up the stairs at Gillette Stadium. But we have had a guest that we should congratulate who's been on the show, Sam Mewis. Do you want to kind of explain your tweet just so that people don't think I'm calling you out on your athletic ability? Well, we had Sam Mewis on the pregame show last year, and obviously now with Sam Mewis named to the uh, 2020, I guess it's technically still the 2020 Olympics, with Sam Mewis named to the U.S. Women's National Team Olympic roster. Now you have, we had in the picture Sam Mewis, who's a World Cup winner and an Olympian. Charlie Davies, who was an Olympian in 2008. You obviously ran the Boston Marathon last year. <laughs> uh, and I get winded walking up the uh, Gillette Stadium steps, as I think everybody does. But yes. uh, there was a time when I was something of an athlete. Those years are, I unfortunately, I think, long past me, as you see by me lifting my leg up and pulling a muscle. Uh, but... You know, that's, it is what it is. Life, life happens. A big congrats to Sam on uh, this upcoming accomplishment. We're so happy for you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Revolution pregame live show this week. Make sure you head over to MyTV38 for their pregame coverage. And kickoff will begin at 7. We'll see you next time.